Maybe my video doesn't like the cold. I don't know what, I don't know why it freezes up like that. But anyway, so video number two. So um, here's the good news. So this was a good place to end, right? Okay, so again, there are things to be anxious about, but try if you can to not let it interfere with whatever joy you may be able to find in any moment or in any particular day as we are finding new ways to be right now. There are things to be happy about. There are things to be joyful for. There are things to be grateful for. And if you can't get there at all, then you are in a place where anxiety is really taking over in a way that's, that's just really not, not helpful to you. And you may want to try to reach out to um, an individual therapist in that case, okay? Um, but I'm not saying there's not stuff to be anxious about. There is, I'm not pretending there's not. The good news about the cortex, moving on, is that it can also learn, just like the amygdala can learn, the cortex can learn too. Um, the cortex learns slightly differently, right? Um, you don't necessarily have to go through an anxiety uh, spiral in order to, um, to retrain the cortex, right? The cortex can learn through education. It can learn by having an experience, you know, for instance, where you are anticipating that speaking in front of a group of people is going to be horrific and is going to be a, a complete disaster. And then you do it and it actually goes great and everybody loves it and thinks that you did a fabulous job. And then suddenly your, you, your cortex says, oh, well, actually that's okay. And so then the next time that you're supposed to go speak in front of people again, it turns out that, that maybe you don't have that thought. Or if you had that thought, you're able to logically say, hey, Mr. Cortex, things went pretty well last time. I'm going to choose not to be anxious about that. I'm going to choose not to scare my skittish amygdala with that one, right? And that's another way that, that the cortex can learn. You can refute the thoughts that you have, right? You can logically talk back to them. And we talked a little bit about that the other day, about this idea of creating the witness of, of um, listening to your negative thoughts and, and I, beginning to identify them, begin to, be, beginning to identify in, in what situations your negative thoughts come up and then taking those negative thoughts and starting to talk back to them, to refute them, to do what you can to negate them right? And that will help your cortex learn. And that will help your cortex learn not to have those thoughts and not to ignite your amygdala and your, and your anxiety spiral, right? So here's another really, really important thing. The cortex learns by repetition best, right? So if you have good thoughts, or at least neutral thoughts, and negative or anxiety producing thoughts, the one you give the most energy is what the cortex is going to learn, okay? So if you spend a lot of time ruminating on negative thoughts, that's gonna stay in your head. That's gonna, your cortex is not gonna learn anything different. The more time you can spend either refuting those negative thoughts and then beginning to replace them with more positive thoughts, the more quickly your cortex is going to learn that system okay it's going to rewire to that so the more engaged you are in that don't give those negative thoughts that power because you are giving them power when you give them energy when you give them time when you give them space you are giving them power over your own mind and you have the ability to stop it okay so what you have to do so it so it responds to logic reasoning experience and education okay the, the cortex does that's how it learns and repetition Okay. Um, you have to, as we talked about the other day, you have to identify those thoughts, figure out what, what, what group of, and most of us have sort of a couple of categories, you know, the worry, the self doubt, the world is an unsafe place. Um, anticipation, mind reading, catastrophe, whatever you, you tend to have one of those categories and, and maybe you have two or three. Most of us don't have all of them. Okay. Most of us don't have all of them. So figure out what your brand <laughs> of anxiety producing thought is, and then begin to watch for those thoughts. And you can even put them in categories, right? That's one way. That's another way to sort of distance yourself from them a little bit. You can say, oh, hey, I am engaging in self-doubt here. And I know better than that because I know that I can, that I'm much stronger than, 
than I give myself credit for a lot of times because I've gone through X and Y and Z and I've handled these really difficult situations and I know that I can do this. So I'll, I know that I can do this. Um, and I just lost my train of thought to ID the thought. So, so you have to identify the thought then you, and then if you want to, you can categorize it right in the, in the different, in the different categories that I was talking about earlier. And then you need to begin to refute it, to work it out, Log to, to talk back to it logically, to reason with it, to at least bring it down a notch. For instance, um, one of the things that we often, that we'll engage in, so as like pessimism or catastrophizing or obsessing, worrying, perfectionism, guilt, shame, all those, right? So in challenging these, what we, what we often do is we overestimate how awful something's going to be and we underestimate our ability to deal with it, right? So if you can identify the thought and the category that it's in, and then you can say, okay, I mean, really, am I going to die from this? You know, am I going to die from speaking in front of people? Even if it's a complete disaster, am I going to die? No, I'm not going to die. I might be embarrassed. It might be, you know, a difficult 10 minutes that I don't enjoy, but I'm going to walk off the stage and go have dinner and it's all going to be okay. Right? So one thing is to think about, am I overestimating how awful this is going to be? Am I underestimating my own ability to cope? Am I feeling responsible? Am I feeling more responsible than I should be? Right? Is this really, and, and this is the question to ask yourself in this, in this case, is this really my circus and my monkeys? Are these my monkeys? Are these my circus? Is this my circus? Because if this is not your monk, these are not your monkeys and this is not your circus, let it go. Just let it go. It's, it's, that's, don't do that to yourself, right? Don't do that to yourself. Make sure that you actually have some responsibility because often we put responsibility on ourselves that, that we have no business putting on ourselves. It's not, it's not something that is our responsibility. It's not something we're supposed to be in charge of, right? But we take it on. Let it go. We got enough. <laughs> We've all got enough, right? Um, another fear that can come up is a fear of getting stuck um, in a particular, particular place. Um, so notice if that's kind of where you are. And then again, t you can talk to yourself about this. Am I really going to get stuck? Is this really like, and what does being stuck mean? You know, um, what's the worst that can happen? And then you begin to realize like, oh, I'm really, I'm allowing this to set off a certain amount of anxiety, but actually it's not that bad. You know, when you, when you catch the thoughts and you can see them, categorize them and know what they are, most of the time, it's just not that bad, you know? It's when we allow it to happen subconsciously that it's setting off our anxiety. That's when it's, that's when it's tough, you know, because we don't even know where it's coming. We feel like we're getting blindsided by anxiety all the time, and you don't have to be. You can catch those thoughts. You can figure out where, what, they, what they are, how to, what category they fall into, and then you can begin to refute them, to work against them, right? And you can begin to normalize them. And you can also begin to give yourself some more credit for your ability to cope. Because my guess is that all of you have shown incredible strength at different times in your life, that you have dealt with difficult and heartbreaking situations before, and you've come through. Give yourself credit for that, you know? Give yourself credit for being, for being here. Give yourself credit for wanting to think about this stuff. Give yourself credit for taking the time to do some breathing or to, you know, ground yourself or to, to try to, to get hold of your anxiety so that it doesn't rule you anymore. Give yourself credit for that if for nothing else, right? So I think that's the thought I'm going to leave you with. Um, I think I am going to go back over the categories though, just real quick. Okay. Um, because I want, you to be able to to think about this so I just I'm gonna go over these again um, so it's self-limiting beliefs that we have attitudes interpretations of reality that maybe aren't actually true 
The expectation about being judged is a big one, I think. The idea that we can read other people's minds, that we anticipate terrible things happening that haven't happened and may never happen, right? Um, that we have a great deal of difficulty tolerating uncertainty, that we feel guilt about things, that we feel shame about things, that we worry about stuff we don't need to worry about, that we believe that the world is an unsafe place, which to some degree it can be, like now, but it can also be a good place. And it's important to remember that too. Um, the idea of hopelessness, self-doubt, and the belief that fear means danger. So I think I've gone on for a while now. This is a, this between these two, I think it, this one ended up being a bit longer. But again, the good news is your cortex can learn and you can begin to identify these thoughts and catch hold of them and teach yourself not to scare your skittish amygdala. So good luck with that. And um, I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye. Have a great weekend.